Good morning. Uh, it is my great pleasure to welcome all of you, um, new and returning uh, guests, including our partner IRI and its members, uh, back to Case Western Reserve University, at least virtually. Uh, last year, Case Western uh, Reserve University started a strategic partnership with IRI, and together uh, we started uh, this Digital Futures Conference. Uh, we felt that the digital transformation of legacy companies is the next frontier of digital revolution in our economy. And, uh, and we both shared that there is no platform uh, where these companies can come, to, uh, come together to learn from each other's experience. Uh, no sales pitch, no Amazon or Uber stories. Uh, it is the stories of industrial companies with the physical assets and resources, uh, legacy workforces and aging infrastructure who are trying to change the way they operate. Uh, it's not to become Google of this and Amazon of that, but a new kind of digital transformation grounded in the reality of legacy companies. And that's why we started this Digital Futures Conference. And uh, despite it was the very first year, uh, we had tremendously positive responses from participants. So uh, as soon as the conference uh, was over, uh, it was uh, very easy for us to decide that we're going to do it again and make it uh, uh, an annual event. So we started our conference planning back in February. Uh, we were concerned about the capacity of our venue uh, on our campus. But little did we know that the capacity was the least of our concern. Well, as you, uh, you know, we all know, um, we had the, this COVID-19 pandemic. Just like everybody else, uh, we had to decide uh, what we were going to do uh, with this pandemic situation. At one point, uh, we were thinking about uh, canceling the whole thing this year and, and maybe just do it next year. But then we realized, you know, after all, we are the Digital Futures Conference, and if we cannot do it digitally, uh, we must just pack up and go home altogether. So uh, we decided that, that we're going to pivot uh, uh, to a virtual format. And uh, through this amazing uh, collaboration and partnership with all of our uh, planning team, uh, now we are able to bring this conference to you uh, in this virtual format. And I hope uh, you uh, would enjoy uh, this uh, new format, uh, at least for this year. What was just fascinating for me is that uh, while we made the switch uh, to a virtual conference, uh, very reluctantly, I may say, um, uh, we, uh, as we started looking into the detailed plan, uh, we discovered that uh, there are actually some things that uh, we could never done, um, you know, uh, if we were doing in a traditional sense. Uh, and uh, we're doing something that, is, uh, that was impossible before. For example, we have speakers and audience from literally all over the world, uh, from South Korea to Copenhagen and uh, many different parts uh, in the United States. So digital transformation uh, is something that every organization, uh, whether they are for-profit, non-for-profit, uh, public, private, large, small, Everyone is talking about it, and COVID uh, has only accelerated the trend. Uh, just as COVID is a bigger threat to those who had an underlying health conditions, the economic disruption due to COVID-19 is posing particularly uneven threats to those organizations who have underlying conditions. Most legacy businesses uh, that were solely relying on traditional business models struggled, uh, while others in the same sector minimized the damage. For example, while Pizza Hut and California Kitchen suffered a massive 37 drop in their revenue, and both of them ended up filing bankruptcy protection. But a Domino's Pizza in the same industrial sector did not that have, uh, didn't have that problem. Uh, during the same uh, uh, time period, uh, its sales actually went up by 16%. So what was the difference? Obviously, the industrial sector does not determine the fate of the company uh, in this uh, uh, pandemic era. 
Uh, it's because even before the pandemic, Domino's Pizza was digitizing its core business. It was perfecting the online order and delivery systems. When the pandemic uh, happened, it was ready. It was ready to run. Uh, uh, one of the most popular features of their app is what they called zero-click ordering. You know what, the, what it does? You can just simply open the app and hold it for 10 seconds and do nothing. It already knows what is your favorite order, and then it'll just order it for you. It's done. Right? So, of course, uh, you cannot do it without digital technology. The smartphone, personalization, uh, AI-based analytics are all the things that you need uh, to make it happen. Yet you cannot possibly do such uh, radical innovation without a large network of physical stores uh, throughout the nation. Domino's has over 6,000 stores throughout the country. So the Domino's case shows that when you are ready with the digital technology, you could really take advantage of the uh, uh, if you can thrive even during this pandemic era. COVID-19 also has a radically accelerated the time horizon of much needed strategic transformation for legacy companies. Digital transformation is no longer a long-term strategic issue. It is a clear and present challenge that is upon us now. If you're not doing right now what you thought that you would need to do in 10 years time frame uh, during in, in your pre-pandemic mindset, you will be in a big trouble. With pandemic, you don't have the luxury of thinking about digital futures anymore. You must be thinking about the digital present. If not, there will be no futures for you. So. Despite the urgent strategic necessity of the digital transformation, many traditional firms still struggle to understand exactly what it means to them to have a digital transformation, and they still struggle how to do it. Many organizations still uh, approach digital transformation as fundamentally technology exercise. Uh, and, and they think that you know, they can just bring technology on the top of their traditional business model. Until recently, digital transformation uh, was often considered as a periphery activity that does not really change fundamental architecture of the business. Even those organizations that embrace digital transformation early um, often lack a coherent organization-wide vision as to what exactly is digital transformation that enables different groups in the organization to work together. Instead, many of these organizations just suffer from incoherent, fragmented, and uncoordinated activities under a broad and ambiguous idea of a digital transformation. Uh, other traditional organizations that successfully uh, launch digital transformation initiatives are often uh, stuck in a small-scale pilot study. Uh, we call it uh, pilot syndrome. Often led by a small band of a uh, interdisciplinary innovative team uh, with uh, UX designers and software engineers and AI experts and some outside consultant, these pilot projects show promising future, some potentials, but ne they never grow into a scale uh, where they can actually become the future of the company. What is lacking in these uh, traditional firms is a clear understanding of uh, what digital transformation means for them. They need a concrete and specific launching pad to start their journey. And of course, such an understanding uh, necessarily embrace technology, but it must go beyond technology. Technology and digital transformation is where it begins not where it ends. So uh, an effective digital transformation initiative must begin by asking three fundamental strategic questions. These questions deal with the three distinct but interrelated architectures that form the DNA of a firm. By asking these questions and answering these questions, a successful digital transformation must be uh, and attempt to be architecting the company's DNA. So the three questions, why, what, and how? 
So, a firm is a systematic, organized, and sustained effort to provide valuable solutions with scale to change intolerable situations that are found in this world. Therefore, a successful firm must discover an intolerable situation bef uh, before others do, and then design a powerful and effective solution to change that situation, and then finally, build and manage a system that can provide a solution uh, to the society in a sustainable and scalable manner. Digital transformation uh, demands firms to reckon with these three fundamental questions. Uh, not all firms need to think about these uh, three questions all at the same time, and not all firms will be able to come up with unique and effective answers to these questions either. But a firm's ability to ask and answer these questions will undoubtedly shape the fundamental architecture of the firm. That is the very DNA of the company. And the changes in the DNA, or the lack thereof, will determine the life or death of the firm. The reason that digital transformation is so important is that it is one of those very rare technologies that can fundamentally affect all three of these questions. So now let's take a look at these three questions in detail, one at a time, and how digital disruption is shaping uh, these uh, questions. First, why? All companies must ask, uh, why am I in the business, and why do I need a new solution that I need to introduce to the marketplace? The answer to this fundamental question is a reflection of how the firm and its leaders see the world and their understanding of the humanity and science. Although uh, we might be living in the same world, we do not necessarily experience the world in the same way. What is a perfectly fine situation for some people can be utterly and uh, unacceptable and intolerable uh, for others. Depending on the way you see the world and depending on your humanistic and scientific a scientific understanding, um, uh, some firms might say that, you know, we do not need a new solution, while others think that this is totally, desperately, uh, we need a new solution. Let me give you an example. You know, when uh, COVID-19 happened, uh, when many, uh, the many countries uh, introduced a, uh, a contact tracing solutions using digital technology, uh, so countries like China, South Korea, Singapore, uh, they all implemented digital solutions that utilizes um, personal information, uh, including their health record, uh, financial transactions, and physical mobility data. Uh, and, and they use the data uh, to uh, find out uh, where the uh, virus is going and then shut down certain parts of the country. And they were able to use that to uh, uh, track down those who uh, contracted the virus and then isolate them very quickly. So it worked, uh, you know. Uh, but, you know, these technologies um, require the collection of very detailed, massive amount of personal data uh, in a centralized server and used by the public health authorities. And then uh, in, in some uh, countries, they routinely dis, uh, uh, publicize uh, the information about the uh, th those uh, people who have uh, viruses or the locations, businesses that are uh, affected by the viruses. Now, clearly, uh, as I said, these solutions appear to be successful in, uh, in these countries. Uh, and uh, one may take comfort in knowing that at least we have a solution that addresses this market needs. However, if you believe that the individual's civil liberty and the privacy is as important as uh, the, the value of uh, protecting the public health, you may think that this is not an acceptable situation. This is actually an intolerable situation because we have to violate the very basic tenet of uh, uh, personal uh, privacy. So uh, two factors influence one's ability to perceive the given situation intolerable. The first one is that uh, one's ability to see the, the world and then discover intolerable situation, um, uh, it is a direct reflection of the company and its leader's worldview and humanistic value. If the leaders of the company uh, have a conviction that an individual's civil liberty and the privacy have an utmost priority, the current given situation is not an acceptable one. 
a sharp understanding of the issue of privacy and the ability to articulate why the failure of protecting individuals' privacy is a problem can create a powerful starting point of a new solution and creating a new market. And, and this begins with a question of why. Uh, in a similar vein, many digital native companies' inability or unwillingness to recognize the problem of abusive uh, practice of using personal data in many of digital services is increasingly becoming their liability. Uh, these companies have repeatedly failed to see uh, the lack of privacy protection in the digital service uh, is, is an uh, intolerable uh, uh, situation. And that failure is actually creating an opportunity for other companies who have a different worldview and different value. So here, the privacy is not just a matter of ethics. It is a market failure that opens up a new opportunity that, that didn't exist before. And uh, a firm's worldview and its humanistic value is not something that can be easily changed or copied overnight. A firm can imitate someone else's strategy or product or technology. And they may even pretend to have certain value, which it doesn't really believe in. Maybe they can do it for a while, but such efforts cannot be sustained in the long run. This is precisely why the answer to the why question of digital transformation has such an important and uh, uh, strategic uh, implication. Uh, the, the question um, that uh, legacy firms must ask when they start digital transform uh, transformation is why? Why are we in, uh, in the business and what is it that we believe in? The second part of, uh, uh, of the why question is a firm's ability to discover uh, uh, intolerable situations through the lens of uh, its understanding of science and technology. That is, even if the current situation is intolerable from its worldview, if there are no technical solutions to change the pr uh, present situation, um, then the firm's recognition of the intolerable situation simply is meaningless. It's not practical. So let's go back to the COVID-19 digital contact tracing example. So here, uh, even if uh, one uh, is considering the current situation with the decentralized digital contact tracing undesirable and uh, intolerable, if he or she doesn't know how to do that uh, in other way, uh, it, it's almost you know, meaningless to raise the question of why. Um, now, they may just say, well, you know, this is pretty bad, but you know, what else? Well, what else can we do? It is, it is what it is, right? Uh, however, if someone is aware of a potential privacy-preserving analytics that can be used uh, for this uh, digital contact tracing without violating the individual's data privacy, then the current situation is really undoubtedly intolerable. Uh, so a firm's ability to ask a powerful question of why offers an opportunity for the company to identify the market failures that others have not yet recognized. While all other companies are uh, you know, thinking that this is fine, this is perfectly fine, those companies who can ask the question of why in a unique way are the ones who will have a chance to create a radically uh, different uh, market that others uh, haven't even conceived. So how does digital technology influence the answer to this why question? Digital technology fundamentally changes, in many cases, our taken-for-granted assumptions about people, users, uh, buyers, technologies, products, and markets, and industries. The rapid deployment of artificial intelligence, ethics, and the meaning of work, and even the very meaning of intelligence and life are being challenged uh, you know, through technology. The emergence of multi-sided uh, platform changes, who are the product, uh, you know, the producers, and who are the consumers. Uh, firms must understand their consumers uh, not just as the buyers, but also as users, because digital tools allow these companies to continually communicate and, and monitor and interact 
with uh, users long after they purchase the product. Uh, the integration of powerful sensors with AI algorithm challenges our perception of what is possible and what is not possible. Uh, it changes the very meaning of certain products, blurring the boundaries between product uh, or even industries. Uh, using ubiquitous smartphones and, and its speakers and microphone, for example, we can now detect the presence of COVID-19 viruses by simply listening to someone's voice while they're just talking over the phone. right? So such a technical capabilities that were not even possible uh, if, you know, um, in healthcare completely changes the way we think about diagnosis and treatment. And that can fundamentally change the very meaning of what healthcare service delivery means and how uh, they should operate. So even with such radically improved technology, if the leader of the organizations fail to ask the fundamental question of why, the firm is likely to fail to introduce radically innovative products and services and business models using digital tools. So for example, many of the digital services that are popular uh, are uh, now based on questionable practices of privacy protection or very abusive labor policy uh, with so-called temporary gig workers. Business leaders who find such conditions intolerable and equipped with a proper knowledge on digital technology to change those current conditions are likely to introduce much better uh, and fair, far better and desirable digital services that can literally change uh, the way we interact with the digital services. A company that can successfully answer uh, the why questions uh, is the one who can create new market. Uh, Apple was uh, able to create new market of personal computers and iPhones and, uh, and iPods and by asking why should computers be only used for work by professionals. Steve Jobs asked, why can't we use, ordinary people use computers for their everyday life experience? No one was asking that question. When he asked that question uh, in, in early 80s and late 70s, most other industry leaders in the computer industry thought that he was crazy. He was just like working on toys. But history proves that Steve Jobs was right in asking those fundamental questions, like why we are not doing this right. By asking those questions of why, again and again, Steve Jobs and Apple created a new market after a new market, right? Uh, from Mac to iPod to iPhone. But behind the simple and benign question lies Steve Jobs' deeper appreciation of the relationship between people uh, and humanity and technology. His question is a reflection of his conviction that everyone Everyone has a right to live a creative life, and his belief that the technology is a tool not, uh, not just for boring routine work, but for individuals' creativity. So for him, a world where the computers are just used for boring routine administrative work is simply unacceptable. So he went on and, and went out and reimagined the, the very meaning of computers and then ended up creating a whole new market and eventually changed the world with the technology that he created, right? And then at the end, he created the most valuable company in human history. Now it is becoming almost $2 trillion dollars in market cap. So when a leader is asking the question of why and begin, begins to recognize the given situation as intolerable through the lens of digital technology, uh, it is becoming the beginning of the most impactful and disruptive type of digital transformation. Digital technology alone cannot disrupt the world. It is only when the technology is combined with our ability to ask the question of why. So the, the answer to the question of why is directly related to what I call digital meaning architecture of the firm. Digital uh, uh, meaning architecture of a firm defines how digital uh, assets of the company will affect who they are and why they exist. It is the moral compass of the company and pointing to the true north of the firm. Now, the second question is the question of what? Once a firm gains a clear understanding of why it is in the business and 
what is the intolerable situation that uh, it is trying to change. The next question that it needs to ask is precisely what is the solution that it can create to change the situation for the better. The answer to the question is addressed within a confined space of a given market. Uh, and the, the answer to the question of why defines the market that you will be in. Right? Uh, but the answer to the question of uh, uh, what will determine what kind of product uh, you will introduce to the market that you decided to enter into. So Apple created a new market for smartphone by asking the question of why. Why does a phone cannot be connected to the internet all the times? And then Apple created its own answer to the what question, and that is iOS and iPhone. And then Google created its own answer to the what question, the same why answer, smartphone is why answer. And then it has Android and Pixel. And then Samsung had its own response to the what question, which is Galaxy. Now, at, at the end, they are all answering to the same question of what within the confinement of same why answer that they all share. So that's why they are in the same market, but competing with a different product. So digital technology, uh, again, plays a very important, ro uh, important role here. So digital technology allows a completely different design and engineering compared to what we could do uh, on, uh, with an analog questions, uh, analog technology. Um, so take Tesla, for example. In a way, Tesla shares the same response to the question of why. You know, why do we need a car? Uh, well, you know, just like any other automotive companies, uh, it is trying to provide a comfortable, individualistic and stylistic mobility solution to take us from one location to another. And then the sleek design of Tesla's body shows a remarkable resemblance to a high-end sports cars or a sports utility vehicles produced by the legacy companies, right? However, the resemblance is only skin deep. Tesla behind the curvy uh, sheet metal body, uh, it is entirely built with a very complex array of digital technology consisting of sensors, uh, AI algorithms, specialized microprocessors and custom designed motors and batteries. Uh, it is often said a Tesla powertrain system has about 18 moving parts. Get this, 18 moving parts. And a typical internal combustion engine powertrain has uh, hundreds if not thousand different moving parts. So in other words, it looks like a car, but it is not a car. The, the oldest model of Tesla Model S is more than eight years old. However, Tesla has yet to introduce a facelift of the model. Have you seen any traditional automotive companies without introducing new facelift every year? This is unheard of. But, but why uh, is Tesla able to do it? It's because Tesla's primary source of value creation is, is digital assets. It's not physical product, if you will. It needs to look good enough, but what is real is inside a car. That's something that we cannot see. That, in other words, Tesla uh, is responding to the question of what with a very radically different solution using digital technology as its core asset. So a firm's ability to come up with a successful answer to the question of what depends on the firm's uh, uh, engineering and design ability. So while the question of what is not as disruptive as the question of why, which can create a whole new market, the question of what can also potentially completely reshape the competitive landscape of uh, an existing market. So when done properly, an answer to what question with the digital tools would allow us to fundamentally change what I call a value proposition of their product. So the answer to the what question leads to uh, digital value architecture. Digital value architecture of a firm defines how the firm creates and captures value using digital assets. It specifies what key assets it needs to utilize to create value. 
And, and with digital uh, assets being the foundation of value creation, a firm can build a new value architecture that can potentially provide what I call network and learning and transformative and generative effects using the unique capabilities of digital tools. We don't have to. Uh, we don't have time to elaborate all these uh, four different unique capabilities. But what is important here is that uh, those uh, uh, the capabilities allow the firm to create what I call digital value premium, where the value that is created from digital assets can enjoy an exponential growth as the size and then scale of the operation uh, grow. So this is a fundamental aspect of the second question uh, of what. Now let's take a look at the third question and the last question, the question of how. The question of how um, uh, is uh, uh, the question about how we set up the operation. The, if the first question of why is the question about uh, how to create a new market with the digital tools, digital assets, and if the second question of what is about creating new products in an existing market, the third question of how uh, is about how we produce the digital solutions, the what, in a sustainable and scalable way. Uh, and the, uh, the answer to this question is fundamentally about our organizational uh, operational capability uh, through process, structure, and technological infrastructures. So uh, this is a question that many organizations ask all the time. Um, I haven't seen an organization uh, uh, with good management who do not ask this question on an ongoing basis. Um, some even think that this is the only thing that matters when it comes to management. Uh, and then, unfortunately, this is uh, many times how most organizations approach digital transformation. They think that uh, you know, uh, we just need to ask how we could use digital technology to make our process and structure and technology infrastructure better. These organizations, uh, you know, how we do the same thing, um, you know, that we've been always doing, uh, but better, faster, cheaper by tools like AI and big data and IoT. Of course, there's nothing wrong with asking those questions. In fact, some of those approaches may be uh, a, a meaningful place where you want to start your digital transformation journey. However, if that's the only thing that you do, then uh, we have a problem. Uh, digital transformation is a very expensive endeavor. By only focusing on how uh, your firm can do the same thing in the same market with the same kind of product, just better, cheaper, faster, using digital technology, you probably will never enjoy the tremendous opportunities uh, that, um, that digital technology can create uh, in terms of new value that you can create. Uh, with the same digital tools. Digital tools such as machine learning, wearable computers, and IoT, and blockchain, and all of that can be used to operate uh, the organizations in a way that were not possible in the past. For example, due to COVID-19, many organizations are embracing virtual tools. Uh, for example, hospitals in the U.S. have fundamentally altered the way the physicians are interacting with non-emergent uh, emergency patients. Uh, in this case, organizations uh, can quickly use the digital tools to implement and produce the solution that they already have designed. Uh, such an ability to answer the question of how with the digital tools depends on the firm's ability to change its process, structure, and underlying technology infrastructure. For example, this conference, the way we are operating, in a way is about the, uh, the question of how. How should we run a conference? We didn't really fundamentally change the, what conference means and why we do conference here. So the question, um, uh, answer to the question of uh, how leads to um, what I call digital operational architecture. Uh, digital operational architecture specifies how a firm can use digital technology to change its process, structure, uh, and uh, infrastructure. An important challenge that many organizations face is to avoid being stuck uh, with the question of how with digital technology. It's okay uh, to start with it. Even if you start with the question of how, the firm's uh, who are serious about digital transformation must uh, find a way to elevate the question and, and discussion around uh, digital transformation around what and eventually uh, how. 
So for example, your digital transformation project can be about a small incremental improvement of, uh, of what you're doing already. Right? So for example, uh, it could be, uh, let's replace our call center uh, and, and let's create an app that users can um, uh, solve their own problem directly using uh, pure digital experiences. Now that is a question of how. It doesn't really change what you do, uh, what you sell, and why you exist. But as you look for ways to make smartphone app to work, you may end up, uh, end up creating a whole new product, a whole product that is solely uh, based on the digital experience on smartphone, uh, smartphone app. So now you have a new answer to the question of what. So you actually change the product itself. But as you continue to think about what this product means and uh, who are the competitors that you're competing with, sometimes the use of such product, digital, pro digital pure digital product in your uh, industry may end up changing your relationship with your customer uh, in the most fundamental way. You may actually end up uh, 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 entering into different market, you end up competing with other firms that you never thought about competing. Now you might be asking the question of why. So I will conclude uh, where I began. A firm is a systematic, sustained, and organized effort to create and deliver solutions to change a given intolerable situation for the better. In doing so, all companies must ask three core questions. Why, what, and how? The question of why will lead you to change the meaning architecture. The question of what will lead you to change your value architecture. And the question of how will change, uh, lead you to change the operational architecture. And, and together, Digital transformation is not just a technical exercise. Digital transformation is a, uh, is a true uh, uh, effort to re-architect the fundamental core DNA of your uh, uh, organization. The fundamental DNA of your organization has three architectures, like I said, meaning, value, and operational architecture. And those things can be discovered through why, what, and how. Now, this year's conference theme um, has three words, strategy, culture, and technology. And I think uh, they are directly related uh, to the uh, three questions in a slightly different order. The culture is about value. It is about who we are. It is about, um, you know, why we're in the business. It, is, uh, it enables us uh, and, and, and help us to ask and answer the question of why. And then uh, the strategy uh, is fundamentally about uh, how we make the choice of what to do and what not to do. That's what strategy do. And uh, it is what enables us to ask and answer the question of what. And then finally, in the digital transformation, uh, technology and technology infrastructure is fundamentally about how we do what we do right, in, in, uh, through digital technology. So um, uh, an important element in this light uh, of this conference, and this is why we actually put this, uh, the content at the very end as a grand finale of the conference, is uh, the appreciative inquiry. Some of you already know what appreciative inquiry is. Some of you probably never uh, heard about it or only heard about it but never have used it in, a, in, a, in your organization. Uh, it is a tool that was invented here at Weatherhead School, and it is a very powerful um, uh, tool to uh, change organization based on uh, generative dialogues and uh, the power of thinking about uh, uh, what you have already instead of what you do not have. And um, uh, this is a session that will be led by uh, Professor Ron Fry, uh, who actually co-invented uh, this method, appreciative inquiry. And you're going to learn how to ask these questions that I uh, just went over, uh, why, what, and how, using the powerful uh, framework of uh, appreciative inquiry. 
and you will learn uh, how to engage in a uh, generative dialogue uh, in your organization right after the conference when you go back to your own uh, organization um, as a way of uh, jump-starting uh, your uh, digital transformation journey. Uh, it doesn't have to be complex uh, strategic planning. Uh, it could begin by asking a set of simple but fundamental questions. So throughout this conference, uh, and uh, we, we selected uh, really interesting case studies uh, that showcase uh, how other legacy organizations are asking these questions and, and, uh, and moving their uh, digital transformation journey forward. Uh, and uh, we also have a, uh, a great keynotes and really interesting um, panels. So uh, more than anything else, uh, uh, quite frankly, personally, I uh, really look forward to uh, learning from these incredible sessions myself. And I'm sure that all of you uh, will enjoy uh, these sessions as well. Uh, I'll be around. I will pop in different sessions here and there. I'll try to ask questions and answer some of the questions that you may have. And I will see you uh, on day three uh, uh, and day four uh, on the stage uh, with other uh, speakers. So once again, uh, thank you for uh, uh, joining this Digital Futures Conference 2020. I hope uh, you uh, will enjoy it. Uh, I guarantee you that you will get a lot out of it. And uh, thank you again for joining us. Thank you.